it is said that there is only one Michael Jackson. And in the global arena of entertainment, that is certainly true. Yet on a deeper, more profound level, there is another. Michael Jackson, our icon. Coming up, Michael in his own words. Friendship is a thing I'm just beginning to learn about. Um, I was raised on the stage, and that's where I'm comfortable. And everything else is like foreign to me. I'm just beginning to know and learn about people, friendship. With never before seen interviews. I feel thankful, is, is how I feel. Photos and stories. Genius takes a lot of discipline, and that's something that Michael Jackson had. Eight to ten hours of practice every Sunday. Tell me about the Sunday ritual. For every Sunday I fast. I don't eat anything. Um, it's just something I decided to do for my body. Uh, and I dance every Sunday. What music do you dance to when you do this? Mine. Or anything that's got a fast beat to it. I think that Michael's true genius is that there's nobody else that had the combination of being able to sing and dance and entertain and understand the moment. Motown 25 for me, the first time we got to really see a moonwalk was as crazy as thinking about walking on the moon itself. Is the achievement as big? No. But was the moment as big? Probably bigger. They said when Michael would, would rehearse, if you were off, he heard you. He'd walk around and walk over to the individual that messed up that he did not see, but he heard the mess up and heard exactly where in the room they were and knew exactly which move did not go in its right place and fixed it. That's a different type of genius. His simplicity is what was genius about him in a complex structure. He would say to me, Bearden, when we're doing arrangements and cutting things and all that, they, got, they have to be able to hum it. I want people from 8 to 80 to be able to hum my melodies. And he says, well, you know, the thing about my music is even all of the rhythm has to be up loud. See, my, my vocals are really rhythmic, and he says, I like to put my backgrounds up high too right there. But he says, but then there's musical elements that I use like vocals, so that doom, 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 he would go. He said, that part is there, and then that's his cousin coming up right there. That's his cousin coming in, so he would go, doom, doom, here's his cousin right there. Doom, 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 and he would explain stuff to me like that all the time. And right away, the music would be there. And when I got it right for him, he would just dance, he would just look at me and just go. That was it. He would never go, see, I told you. A lot of people, they're used to um, just seeing the outcome of work. They never see the side of the work you go through to produce the outcome. I just see him getting dressed and then looking at himself in the mirror and he said, you know what? Is there an opportunity here to do something different? That black cardigan that he wore for the iconic, you know, Motown 25 moment, you know, that came out of his mom's closet. On the stage, you didn't even think about it. It just was, wow, look at that magical cardigan. And Mike, in his uh, autobiography, uh, you know, out of a five-star rating, he, Mike himself said that Motown was about a four. He, uh, <laughs> you imagine that, right? He did the moonwalk perfectly, and he did the three spins, and he wanted to freeze on his feet for three seconds, and only did one second because he didn't get a good uh, grip. So go figure, Michael Jackson's human after all. The history of Johnson Publishing Company and Michael Jackson and the whole family goes back probably, I'm thinking, 35 years or more. The last, the last count that I have actually is 27. 27 uh, jet covers. And then he had 15 uh, ebony covers, which is an awful lot. My father met Michael and the entire Jackson brood um, when they came to Chicago. Right after the big records, I want you back, let me say, and there was a luncheon here for him. 
uh, hosted by the uh, company founder, Mr. Janice Johnson. Uh, Michael, even at that age, he's probably about 12 years old, he was always a loner. Uh, we noticed that the brothers sat over there at the luncheon and he wanted to sit by himself or with Mr. Johnson. When he first met Mr. Johnson, he was very impressed you know, with him. And as he got older, he wanted Mr. Johnson to be a mentor. He turned out to be one of his key financial advisors. And one thing that Mr. Johnson told him, he said, I wouldn't invest in restaurants uh, or just, just land. You want something that's not gonna change and not be temperamental. So you want something where you're owning the music rights to something, like a catalog. Hmm. After Mr. Johnson gave him that advice, he bought the Beatles catalog for $47.5 million. To the world, he was the inimitable king of pop, the greatest superstar the world had ever known. But long before he was the world's Michael, he was our Michael. I think that in the beginning of the Jackson 5, black people owned him and them uh, more so than other people. Somewhere along the way, Michael transcended ethnicity. Make no mistake about it, Mike was a brother. There's no way you can divorce how they came up and where they came from. As a matter of fact, he embraced it. I, I think that a person that penned Liberian Girl, I mean, they could have... They could have chosen any woman to sing about this Liberian girl. No, oh, I wrote that in uh, at my house in the game room. I guess I was playing some pinball or something. And the song just popped in my head. And uh, I think I ran upstairs, put it on tape, mm -hmm. and uh, it became Liberian Girl. I mean, asking me what my favorite Michael Jackson song is almost asking me, like, What's, what's my favorite breath I ever took? Because some days I'm in the mood for young Michael Jackson. So I want to hear, I want to want to be where you are, oh. And then I'm in the mood, you know, as soon as Billie Jean comes on, you can't help but your things start thrusting and you start doing it and you, people looking at you like you're crazy and you're like, I don't care. And Can You Feel It was my absolute favorite song and I played it so much that one day my mother came into my room and broke it over her knee because I would not stop playing it over and over. It's a tie between Give It Up or Your Ways. There's always a dangerous record with Teddy Riley and all those guys. Uh, I always love to hear him sing um, Can't Help It, the Stevie, Stevie Wonder song that he wrote for him. And I go and watch the Way You Make Me Feel video and not just for Tatiana. I love Dirty Diana. That's, That's one, of my, one of my favorites. Why? Because it's, it's, uh, it's a life story of uh, a groupie. It's something that I've experienced and a lot of people who grow up on the road, like me. I mean, I don't, I don't remember not performing. How do you feel about the song Bad? Now, I know that you didn't write the video, but you're telling me that it's based on another person. This kid who went to school upstate in the country, whatever, who is from the ghetto, uh, and he tried to make something of his life and he would leave his old friends behind and when he came back um, on spring break or whatever, Thanksgiving break, his, friend, his friends became so uh, India jealous of him that they killed him. But in the film, I don't die, of course. So it's a true story that was, we had taken from Time or Newsweek magazine. Yeah. And uh, he is a black kid like me. Michael's blackness and, and, and how he felt about Obama he said, you know what I did, Bearden, when he, when he won? I said, no, MJ, what'd you do? He said, I just cried. But not only was it a victory for black people, and it was, he said, but it was just a victory for the world. We need, we need, we need that energy in the world right now. We need, we need to embrace the love. But he was always talking about love. The us that I think he's talking about, and they don't care about us, wasn't the we of the we are the world. I think he was specifically <laughs> talking about us.